Hey guys, it's Troy here with another pen mail video, and I've got a collection here that just showed up in my mailbox today. One of the things I recommend that people do, and I have on this channel several times, is to develop a relationship uh, with a vendor that they know and like. I've worked with one particular vendor an awful lot over the years, and he knows what kind of pens interest me as well as other long-standing customers. So he had a bunch of pens that he knew that would be within uh, my taste and uh, probably my price range that I'd be willing to spend. So I got all of these here in one shipment, and quite honestly, um, all of these pens together cost me less than the retail value of one of these pens and maybe slightly more than another one. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I've got. And then what I've got it uh, stuck in here, this is, uh, I picked this up at the St. Louis Pen Show from a vendor who uh, 3D prints stuff. Uh, and that was kind of in my last um, pen haul video from the St. Louis Pen Show. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I got here a uh, little bit by bit. So the first one is um, an old pilot and it is a vanishing point or capless, as they used to call them back in the day. So it still has the tag on it right there. So um, I don't have one in that particular color, and I do have a pilot capless, as it is, or a vanishing point, as we tend to call them now. So that's one, and it came with the box. So I haven't looked to see what kind of condition it's in, but with that tag on it, I suspect it's probably, it may never have been used, I'm not sure. Uh, but all these other ones here, they have been inked at one time or another. So let's go ahead. I'll start with this one, even though it's the last one that he added into my package. This particular pen is from Montegrappa. You know, I've got several Montegrappas in my collection. Some are better than others. Uh, but here you've got the Montegrappa Privilege. And you can see it's kind of like a hexagonal thing right there. It's a good size pen. I mean, that's a... It's a little bit of heft to it, and uh, this happens to be the Privilege and Sterling. So, one of the things that whoever owned this particular collection where he obtained these pens, they were really into cartridges. So, I'm going to have to clean these up, and most of these actually had cartridges already in them, or expended cartridges. Uh, so, I'm going to have to do some cleaning on these, and... Uh, uh, find some converters. Fortunately, the Monte Grappa does take a standard international uh, converter, so I'll probably clean this up a little bit, put some polish on it, but it's got those that Greek pattern right there. So um, it is something that uh, I'm looking forward to trying because it's about the right size. I like I like the oversize of it. So uh, we'll go ahead and play with that here in just a little bit couple of pens here. Um, you know, these have been kind of on my radar eventually, maybe. Haven't been a huge fan of Japanese or Chinese pens, but Pilot does make some decent pens, and uh, I like Pilot probably my favorite Japanese brand out there. Well, these are more of a pocket style pen, but they're, you can see right on there, they are the Elite, the Pilot Elite model. And both of these when you pull them and you post them, they actually get to be a very nice size to hold in the hand. Both of these have 18 karat gold nibs, one in fine and one in medium. So the black one is fine and the uh, burgundy and silver one is uh, one in a medium nib. I tend to like broader nibs that are Asian, oriental if you will. <laughs> So those are in the collection, and uh, so I'll see how that goes. There was an old Esterbrook LJ that was thrown in there, and uh, for those of you who are familiar with that, an old 1940s, circa 1940s Esterbrook made in the USA out of New Jersey uh, with a sack filler, uh, with a lever. So I've got a bunch of Esterbrooks and uh, you know, an iconic American pen. There were two of these. You can see that logo, Mont Blanc. There you go. And uh, these two are the slimline version of the Noblesse. Noblesse. So, open these up. 
You can see they're uh, very thin pens, probably out of the 1970s, because that was the style back in the 1970s, is a very thin pen uh, done, you can see here, in a stainless steel. And they both have those gold tone nibs. Now, I actually previously, from the same vendor, had purchased one. And there it is. Now, this one I had already intended to give to somebody because somebody in my family has a birthday coming up in 10 days. And he's always been asking me for a Mont Blanc. So, that was going to be it. Well, now I have three from which to choose or to gift or not to gift as I see fit. But you can see I've got uh, this one here on the clip. You can see it's got the Mont Blanc logo compared to these here which are just the clip with no logo on it but they all have the snowflake logo on the top so those are I got three of these one time I had none now I have three <laughs> all right well let's keep going I do not own or I did not until now uh, anything by Caron Dash which I if I remember correctly is a Swiss company uh, but this particular Caron Dash, even though I've looked at some, and even some of their lower-end ones I thought would be worth investing in, uh, but this particular one, Caron Dash, you can see right there on the cap band, Swiss, gold-plated, kind of a nice dark green with gold trim, uh, but this is their Le Mans version, a Le Mans pen, L-E-M-A-N. Waterman has a Le Mans. Well, Caron Dash does as well. And I can see that I'm going to have to clean this one up because there is still a little bit of ink stain left on that nib. And I was saying earlier about how this individual seemed to be into converters. They did have a, an old converter in, or uh, cartridges rather. Just had an old cartridge in here that I chucked a little earlier. And I did check my guide and this one does seem to take um, a standard international cartridge or converter. And I do have standard internationals laying around, so I'll put that in once I get it cleaned up, and I'll play with it. Going back to the Waterman theme, this is the Waterman Expert 2. You can readily tell that by uh, the... If you look right here, you have that slant, which is very, uh, very Waterman-esque, especially if you look at the, the modern hemisphere. But you can see here it's also on the Expert the bifurcated clip and this is a, the Waterman Expert Model 2. Uh, you can tell that several ways. Number one, the material is a lacquered metal. An Expert 1 would be all plastic and an Expert 1 would have an angled nib which would be kind of up, across, and down. And uh, they actually write very, very well. Now, I like this one better than the Waterman Expert 2 model that I have already much better looking I think than the one I've got and probably in better shape but these also are a cartridge converter pen they do take proprietary Waterman cartridges or converters fortunately for me I've got a drawer full of Waterman converters why because well gee I own a lot of Waterman pens I own more Waterman than any other brand in my collection so a Waterman Expert 2 uh, they're up to expert number three right now, which I did purchase not too long ago. And uh, I think the expert one was one of my favorites, expert two. I'm hoping to find that I like this one better than the expert two that I already have. I'm hoping it writes well. And one last one here that was just added to my collection, uh, Waterman Rhapsody. Again, the bifurcated clip. It is kind of a nice looking swirl pattern, you know, almost kind of like that old ebonite looking thing, uh, but it is a lacquered metal. The Waterman W up top, and you can see the Waterman on the cap band there. So it is a pole cap, Waterman nib, and this one as well. This one was a little tighter than the other one. And this one also had an old Waterman cartridge. I've got a bunch of Waterman cartridges and converters, so, you know, like I said, I just went ahead and chucked what was ever was in there for a cartridge. But I'll clean this one up as well, and I'll see how well this one does. So, that's yet another pen mail session. 
uh, with a whole bunch of uh, pens where, quite honestly, just the cost of one of these pens, new or in excellent condition, I was able to purchase the entire set. So these are now added to Troy's collection.